Hello everyone. This course covers many new concepts in a very concise time window, and many results are quite abstract. It is always easier if you can concretize abstractions and visualize those results, from which you can build up your own mathematical intuition and understand all the materials much better. To achieve this goal, programming or coding in the by the computer is a very useful tool. So as a general, if you don't understand something, you can program it. So programming will help you to understand all the materials we covered, uh, we, we're gonna cover in this course. So it helps you to check your own answers. In the exams, there are many results that don't make sense at all. For example, probabilities outside the range of zero one, which is not probably defined, and probability measure of a smaller set should always be smaller than the measure of a larger set, right? And note that intersection of A and B is always smaller than the set of A. So the measure is supposed to be smaller as well. The probability mapping those smaller sets always to a smaller number. And squares should never give negative results. And there are many other answers that or kind of doesn't uh, that they don't make sense. So my guess is the reason is that the material covered by this course is a little bit abstract, and it's always useful if you can work with numbers, work with things you are familiar with, for which we can rely on computer program to help, right? It makes things more real. It allows you to throw a die thousand times then it's very easy to calculate the probability or frequency of seeing two eyes or less, right? Simply count how many of these 1,000 throws show two eyes or less, and then calculate the ratio, right? Divide the N1 with the number of the total uh, throws, which is 1,000 over there. Now the number is always smaller or equal to one, which is one reason why probability is also always smaller or equal to one. If you want to throw a dice for 1,000 times in real life, that takes a lot of time, but a computer can easily do that. In this course, we can use R or Python or whatever program uh, language you prefer. Uh, personally, I would recommend using RStudio from rstudio.com, a IDE to run the language R. Or if you prefer to work with Python coding, you can also find a lot of useful materials from Google Colab. You can also run Python directly as we'll show you shortly. Right? You may find some useful information or R coding from this website. You can click the link directly from the slides I provide on Nesta. So now let's take a short tour on R and Python. You can pick one language, program language you like. The textbook uses R language, so it might be easier for you to work with R directly. Then you can use the codes introduced from the textbook directly. Okay, let's first take a look of the R language programming. I usually prefer to work in an R notebook which is an interactive programming file. You can create, create your own R notebook file by click File, New File, and R Notebook. This is what you get for default, by default. I made some small adaptions to the header part of the file. If you prefer my tablet, you can also work, uh, you can also work by copying paste my header part directly into your file and then work with your own programming project. The R note notebook contains two parts essentially. A text chunk where you can write wh whatever you prefer and a coding chunk, right? So here you can simply, oh, sorry. So you can simply delete it. If you want to add a new chunk, you can simply by clicking insert chunk, choose your language. Here we choose R. 
okay? Or you can use the hotkey combination control, LT and I. So now we type in some commands over there. And we can click the button over there to run the code chunk. So it will, it will give you the results of running this specific chunk. Or you can use the hotkey combination control and enter. It will run the commands line by line and give your final results in the end. Right, it's quite easy to work with. So the results will be directly displayed from the file itself. The file can be easily compiled into PDF report by clicking the connect, connect to PDF on the toolbar. It's over there. Click this one, you get your PDF report generated by this coding file. I'll show you the PDF file in the end, but let's first consider a small experiment we just mentioned before. Calculate the frequency of having eyes smaller than two among 1,000 rows of a six-sided fire die. So a die with eyes from one to six, and how you throw it 1,000 times, how many times you see the result with one eye or two eyes. First, I set the seed, because now we let the computer to generate random sequences, right? It generates 1,000 times later on, we're gonna show the results. Mm, and if you want anyone who run the file to get exactly the same random sequences, you can set the seed. Because program, they generate random sequences based on the seed number. They are not the random numbers we see in our daily life, they are rather pseudo random sequences. So if you fix the number of seed, here I set the seed to be one. Every time you run the file, you will get exactly the same outputs for anyone to run the file. Okay, let's first take a look how we simulate one such die row in R. So it essentially is to sample from number numbers from one to six, right, with replacement. So each time you get one number out of one to six with equal likeliness. And here, let's take a look. If we draw only one time, we have a sample of size one, right? We only have one observation over here, okay? This is the results. You can run it again, it gives you different results each time. Uh, so it basically mimicking the procedure of throwing a die and get the results of how many eyes, right? Now we simulate the dice rolls for 1,000 times, which means we're going to sample from numbers from 1 to 6 for 1,000 times. So we have a sample size of 1,000 with replacement. Replace is true. Okay. We store the results in the dice row variable. And now is the output. Okay, let's take a look of the plot. It basically plots uh, for each row which which number we have for the uh, as the results. So roughly the results, I would say, distribute fairly for each number. Okay, if we plot the first twenty results, it looks like this, right? So these are the dice row results for the first twenty rows. For the first two, you get two eyes, and then six eyes, three eyes, three eyes, four eyes, right? We can easily calculate the frequency. Recall the problem we want to tackle. So how many times we see dice uh, eyes with two eyes or one eye, right? Out of six eyes. Give your, you can pause here and give your allocated guess. I would personally guess the number should be close to one over three, right? Because that's the frequency of seeing two outcomes out of six outcomes. Two over six, that's gonna be one over three. And let's see how the real frequency we get from the program angle, which is 0 0.302. So roughly the same results. Very close to one over three, right? 
This is also quite interesting because we are working with uh, pure random sequences, and you see the frequency will be closer and to closer to a deterministic number. Okay, this is one example of running program in R. Next, let's take a look of running program in Python, working with the same exercise. Before that, let's take a look of the file we, we can generate from this uh, R notebook. So let's click the connect to PDF and see what we have. Okay. So now this is the results we have. Okay. So we have, you see the, this is a very nice PDF report, a mixture of our texts and the codes and also the results of running those codes. Next, let's take a look of running Python notebook. Now, if you run the, if you open the link, collab, dot research dot google dot com you will enter the google collab interface from your browser okay now we open the google collaboratory this is what look like to start with you can open your recent files your examples provided by google or you can open any files from your google drive your github drive and you can upload your local file to uh to this collab so I've already have one desk roller program over there. So I'll open it shortly. But first, let's look what you can have over there, right? You can have a lot of uh, interesting teaching materials are all coding over there. You can run the results directly by clicking the bar. I will give you the results. And uh, it's quite interesting to see how everything play around with different commands and uh, can also learn the machine learning and more, there's more resources right for you to if you are really interested in into coding this is a very interesting uh, website visit and all the results can be run from your uh, browser directly you don't have to install extra softwares so which is uh, also why I like the, like this one as long as, as long as you have your network you can program nowadays. So I open the uh, dice roller program. Okay. Again, I prefer to work with uh, Python notebook, a an interactive programming file. You can well, see the result directly. Mm, two right. So it's also quite easy to insert code chunk or text chunk. It also contains, this part is the text chunk. So you can write whatever you, you prefer. Over here is not runnable. You can also include a code chunk. For example, I, let's say B equals two. And uh, let's print out B, okay? So we get the results of these commands. How to here when you when you want to create a new notebook, basically click file, new notebook, you will have this uh, a new notebook to create your own uh, programming project. Now let's return to the desk roller program I wrote. I'll upload this uh, notebook file also on Nesta. So now let's redo the desk ro rolling exercise uh, because here you need to program in Python. So you first import the default packages for generating random sequences, right? Import random package. And then let's again draw from uh, a sample from numbers from one to six, four, 1000 times and let's print out the row uh, rolling results we have okay now i store the results store the uh, results in the variable named row and now i print out uh, the results over there okay you'll see those are uh, either one two three to six four thousand times 
Now I want to do some uh, nice plots. I first again import the default packages uh, for drawing plots. And here is the histogram of our dice rolling results. You'll see for each numbers, right, one, two, six, three, six, four, five, six, we roughly have a quite fire uh, distributions. So what is the number of eyes smaller than two? Well, the results are already in printout over there, but we can do that again, right? Some all count all the results that is strictly smaller than three. So how many of them? 334, and the frequency is, again, very close to 1 over 3. So here we give the short introduction for coding in R and IPython. Those programming can help you learn with this course. Play around with coding is quite fascinating, and I hope you can find your own interesting stories by doing codings and programming. Okay, good luck. Thanks for watching this video.